TOK SA title, May 2025. This is the one you've been waiting for. I used to hate it. I, this might be my favorite now. Let's get an A. Get an A in TOK. By now you should know how my video works. I've got this document down here. You can download it for free in the description. It's got links, it's got my notes. Everything I'm gonna be going through in this video is in this document below. You can also um, click here to get in contact with me. I've been chatting with people all day. I got a new gig where you can send me your, uh, your essay outline and I'll record a video for you just talking my way through it. You can also send me your essay, your exhibition if you happen to still be working on that, which I hope you're not. Also, I've got a website with all of my guides, all of my videos. And then also get an a and tok.com slash free stuff gives you free outlines and organizers and things to help you out with that. Um, yeah, but you want free stuff. Let's look at some free stuff. Okay, so if you've seen my other video on how to pick a title, I called this one the confusing one. And when I made this video, like after a day of thinking about these titles, I was like, I don't like this one. This is confusing, but I'm not going to lie. Like, look at this document. Look how many things I have here. Um, look how much research I did for you for you, my subscribers, and you probably haven't subscribed, that's okay, don't subscribe, it's fine, it won't, won't hurt my feelings. Okay, back in caffeine now. Okay, so as I was doing all of the research, trying to figure out what the heck this title is asking me, I realized I really like this is what, what it is saying. So it's really important to figure out what this phrase means, and as soon as you figure it out, it makes a lot of sense. A model is something that we use to predict or to simulate or to help. By saying all models are wrong, it's saying a model's point is not to find the exact truth. We don't use a model to find an answer usually. We, find, we use a model to figure out what most likely will happen. And so we, but then it is also useful. So are all models wrong? Hmm. That's what we need to figure out. And so when we're talking about the wrongness of a model and compare that to the usefulness, it's a really interesting discussion. Now, remember, if you've seen my organizers where I gave you the outline and some tips, check out that video as well. This is a to what extent question. So remember, every paragraph when you give an answer, you need to say the extent to which you agree. It could be to a complete extent, to a full extent. It could be to no extent, but every single paragraph. You know what? I'm just going to write that down here. I'm going to add to my PDF now. I'm going to make it in all caps. Every single, that's not all caps. Come on. Every single paragraph, paragraph who should say the extent to which you agree slash disagree. So it could be to some, to no extent, to a little extent. And then at the end, in the conclusion where you give your final answer, then you're gonna say the extent overall that you agree with the statement. But as you'll see in the outlines as well, you want to make sure and have different extents demonstrated for each of your pieces of evidence. Okay, well, what about the evidence? Well, let's take a look at this. Okay, so this one requires math, which this is one of the only times I actually um, talk about maths this year. Most of the titles were not really good for maths. Then I also talk about what I talk about, human sciences and natural sciences. Interesting. Okay, also at the bottom of this document, it's hidden somewhere, I'm just kidding, it's at the bottom. Um, there's a little offer for you. So if you want to take that, um, you can find that offer and get a little discount. All right. So the original quote, this is really important. This article breaks down what is meant by the quote, really important, which is helpful for understanding what you should be talking about. Remember, you're being asked how much you agree with it. But understanding the original meaning gives you a good perspective. So while I was thinking that this title was really confusing, then I read this article right here that I linked in the PDF. It goes straight to the quote, I'm so helpful. And then I'm reading this and I'm going, oh, okay, I get this, what this is saying. A model is not supposed to give us the right answer. It's supposed to push us in the right direction. Ooh, I really like that. That's, that, that's very good. You might, you can just use that. You, you should use that and quote me in your, just kidding, don't. That would be like the worst thing ever. Okay, so similar, it's about utility. And so this website that I gave you, um, it quotes yeah, Yuval Noah Harari, Harari. And he says, scientists generally agree that no theory is 100% correct. Remember, models are about going in the right direction, whatever, whatever I just said. Thus, the real test of knowledge is not truth, 
but utility. Now, if your TOK teacher is worth anything, they have taught you about the test for truth. And one of the tests for truth is, is usefulness, is utility. We don't know if something is true, but if something is helpful, useful, if it leads us in the right direction, we can make the assumption that it's pretty true because certainty is, is pretty hard to find in any of the AOKs. So science gives us power. The more useful that power, the better the science. This is a great quote. You could open up with this, but since I put it in my video, you know that a whole bunch of slackers are gonna open up with it. Also, watch my introductions videos. Um, you don't need to open up with a quote, that's so basic. This is implying that if something is helpful, it's good. Mm, True-ish, I'm just gonna put that there. We don't have to prove something if it helps us figure something out. We just say it works and we're gonna get to that in this one right here about the mathematical axioms. This is one of the coolest things about maths because in TOK, when we're talking about things that are true, knowledge in the maths are usually assumed to be the most certain, the most solid, the most reliable truths. Well, um, I talked with my friend David, who is a PhD in math. He's also like 24. He's, he's brilliant. Hey, he's not watching this. But he said that the foundations of maths, which we call axioms, axioms, they are just assumptions. They are models that we hold to be true but what's weird is we can't prove that they're true, but they, we assume that they're true because all of math works on these assumptions. So check that out because basically what we're saying is math is based on a model, not based on truth. But since they're useful, we would say to a strong degree, we, we agree with this statement. Okay, the Black-Scholes model, this is also human sciences. This is a mathematical formula used for calculating the value of an options contract. That's economics, that's investing. It is based on some assumptions that don't totally work out, but its utility is in help us in, in making a prediction rather than giving a confirmed answer. So read this article. If you're really smart, this is a great example because it's got a whole bunch of like, like where is it? Like, I just don't understand what in the world this is, but I was, I was, you know, researching models in a whole bunch of different AOKs. What the, I nearly swore on my channel. This is not for kids. You can figure this out. But anyway, this is very useful for making a prediction about that will help you prevent loss. Is it going to give you the exact right answer? No. And we don't expect it to. That's why it's a model, not a predictor. Okay, Euclidean geometry, this is really interesting. Euclidean geometry, which is what we all know, like hexagons and stuff like that, makes the assumption that space is flat, but we know that space is round. So with that said, we still follow many of the rules, especially in your math class, that apply to this model. But all engineering, for example, operates um, according to Euclidean geometry, but when we're thinking about really big space, it's actually not explaining everything, but it is totally useful and it's true in theory. Like when we're doing it on paper, it is true and it is helpful throughout. Okay, go away header. Okay, this one is really weird. I've, I just did a deep dive on the research here. This is some of my best research. This in title number three, I went nuts for y'all. Okay, rational and irrational numbers. We use rational numbers to model or symbolize rational. We use rational numbers to model or symbolize irrational ones. For example, pi and the square root of two are used, but it's not perfect. This is because irrational numbers are infinite. So 3.14, that's what we use but that's actually symbolizing something infinite, which is weird. With that said, these imperfect representations of irrational numbers are used in computer processing. Here's how irrational numbers are used in many different, different applications and in architecture. So these are models for real numbers that exist, but that we can't actually put on a piece of paper or in a computer program. Really interesting, um, again, I don't understand it all, but um, as I was reading these articles, I started to understand the purpose of a model. The purpose of a model is to get us, like I said, going in the right direction. All right, let's go to human sciences, rational choice theory. We talk about this a lot. This is not the most, the deepest example because this is used a lot, but it's really good. Rational choice theory, if you're not in econ, was really the foundation of economics and it made the assumption which people believe for a long time, that people will behave rationally. If I'm hungry, I'm going to buy food. If the food is too expensive, I will not buy food. But then, you know, we what we found is that people are not rational, we're emotional and stupid. And sometimes I buy expensive food like kimchi and foie gras dumplings covered in Wagyu steak, covered in beef, beef tallow. Um, I didn't need it, 
but I wanted it. It was not rational at all, but it was delicious. So with that said, even though we know people don't act rationally, we use it all of the time. I have examples of how rational choice theory works in politics. Politics, again, law and criminology and economics, which is where it is originally found. But you can use any of these examples. It totally works. Um, I would just say um, using um, rational choice theory and Keynesian economics, those are the two most commonly used examples in um the human sciences globally. Because remember, on Fiverr, hit me up on Fiverr, fiverr.com slash Pat Freakin' Jones. I've graded over a thousand TOK essays. Um, I, there's probably no one in the world who's graded more TOK essays than me, honestly. And um, I see it all the time. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, I've only seen this once in the TOK essay. This is a really good example. I love Maslow as an educator. So this is a foundational model and concept for beginning psychology that explains how people grow socially and psychology. So we've got this right here. I really like this. So what it's saying is before we can feel safe and secure, we need to be able to breathe and have water. And before we can have high self-esteem, we need to be loved. This is really great. All of your teachers know this. This is so, so common, but um, a lot of people just think it's completely bogus. So like all models, it can be criticized for being too simple when progress and growth is rarely lineal, linear in any aspect. So this article finds a more foundational flaw with, with the model. So um, it's so easy to find things, people criticizing Maslow. It's probably more common to criticize Maslow than to actually believe it, but we still use it because it is a simple thing that we can um, have in the back of our mind as we teach, as we counsel, as we mentor. Okay, next thing, five stages of grief, so common. Everybody knows it, but it's another example of trying to oversimplify something that is not linear. So with, as with other models, there are many criticisms. So what you wanna do here is think about even though it's false, what, what's the word? Even though it's wrong, is it wrong? Yeah, all models are wrong. So five stages of grief is not right. But is it useful? That's what we want to think about. And I would argue that, yes, it is, because it helps people who have not gone through grief understand how grief works in a very simplistic but helpful way. Okay, this one's becoming more common in econ. I saw this pop up a couple of times last year. The Phillips curve was a model used for years to make predictions about unemployment and inflation. Economic growth, I'm going to write slash inflation. I'm writing in all caps. I'm tacky. Okay, that's fine. It has been proven wrong now, of course. It is still used today, though, for short-term predictions and models, for figuring out something very quickly. It is also used to look at the effects of unemployment. Here's another article about how it's still used. So this, nobody believes that the Phillips curve is completely true now. It's just extremely simple. But can we still use it? Well, yes, we can, because I give you the proof right there. Check out those articles. All right, let's check out Natural Sciences. I got some good ones here for you, and my offer is at the bottom of this document in the description. Download the document. Check me out on Fiverr. Um, you want to read about this, human sciences, not natural sciences. Okay, interesting. Simplicity. Though some models may, in, may be inaccurate or outdated, they are still used for educational purposes. I really like this. So, for example, the Bohr model of the atom is still taught despite it being completely out of date because understanding things that are much more complex is hard. So when you are a student, we teach you the simple version so that you can understand the foundations. We're not expecting you to understand quantum mechanical models. I don't even know what that means, right? But we can teach you the simple, a little bit wrong version to get you started so that eventually you understand quantum mechanics and what that really means about the atom. I can see my dog running through my yard right now. Hi, Bootsy. Okay. Newtonian physics. We understand that Newtonian physics do not totally work at the near light and quantum level, but we still apply this model daily. So Newtonian physics work, but as you approach the speed of light, they don't work anymore. So they're not completely wrong. They're, they're mostly right, but we can't say it is the truth. It's that idea like Harari, I love his name, Harari was saying that um, they're not 100% correct. Um, Newtonian physics are 99% correct, maybe 99% correct. But so we can't say that it's um, right, it's truth. That's what's really interesting. But is it still useful? Absolutely. Everybody uses it every day. Here's some examples in a thread to understand it. Okay, really interesting. I didn't know about this. 
GPS is helpful and it works and it uses Einstein's concept of general relativity. But with that said, some people have been poking holes in relativity, but even though um, some people might be bringing up some criticisms, again, we use it all the time. I'm seeing a common trend. Things are helpful in a simplistic way, even though they may not be 100% correct, just like Harari said. Logistical population growth. This took me so long to understand. This curve model is how scientists predict population growth and stagnation. It's a really, actually really simple graph. It says that um, population grows like this. Pretty easy to understand. Um, similar to the Black-Scholes model, it is based on assumptions rather than every factor that could contribute to population growth like stagnation, uh, I'm sorry, like environmental changes, resource ability, and climate change and migration. So when you're talking about how animals um, populate an island, for example, we have a model, but that model can't take into account what the temperature will be like in 30 years. So it doesn't really work, but it gives us a good idea. So um, we can use it. This article tells us why we shouldn't use it. Anyway, last one, exponential decay. I, I kind of got this one, but if you're smart, you can totally understand this. This is another model that is useful because it helps us make predict predictions that will most likely never give a certain answer. It makes assumptions about the size of isotopes, environmental factors, and the nature of radiation in general, but provides scientists with the ability to make predictions. So if we're looking at radioactive material, we can make an assumption about how quickly the radiation will um, decay. Now, with that said, that's just if it was in a void, not as if it was in the real world. So we do know how to treat it, but we can't say we are certain that it will be completely decayed by this date. We just know how much it's going to decay in general. Makes sense. A lot of these were going in the same direction. So what you really want to do is combine all of those and find out the extent to which each of these examples agrees or disagrees. You can completely disagree with this and say all models are um, right, that because they get us most of the way there, that makes them right because it's providing us with helpful information. You could say usefulness makes something right. That totally works and Harari would agree with you. So find different examples that provide different um, ideas, different perspectives for answering this and have each paragraph go in a different direction. If you need an outline, check out my other video. All of the links are in the description here. And I wrote here at the bottom, if you're still reading this, you know what, I'll give you a 15% discount on Fiverr. Just mention this note, a lot of people use that last year. And by the way, I don't do that for every single title. I only choose that for the hardest. If you watch this whole video, um, that's awesome. And I appreciate it. I hope that TOK sucks a little bit less than it did at the end of this video. I'll see you next time.